working in the hospital. Can you believe it? Working full time for the first time in two years, the depths to which I have sunk are undiscernible. Right now, or from 7.30 to 4, we are completing the four weeks of training at the hospital with discarded texts and disregarded nurses. The first two weeks were spent on what are called the circle wards, or the better wards, wards where the men have enough marbles left to choose up sides and play the game. But these last two weeks, are being, we're being subjected to the vegetables, the geriatrics, the organs eating and organs shitting and pissing and moaning and coming on in religious tongues, creatures that need spooned puree and pablum, infants growing backwards, away from civilization and rationality, back to complete dependence, to darkness, the womb, the seed, around the day room, all twisted out of shape by so many years. Ellis, with whatever it was that frightened him absolutely out of his mind, still standing right before his eyes, gaping, horrified, outraged, and farting in his fear. Bewick, his face showing only a gnawed dissatisfaction, gnawed so deeply that he is finally and forever even dissatisfied with that, and only whimpers tearlessly. Pete, grinning, shaking his happy old head, limping spryly about in pajamas, answering only one question. Why'd you quit driving the truck, Pete? I was tired for 28 years, and then I just got tired. Like old Buckley, who asserts or answers when asked. We had some fun, didn't we? Sure, we done have some fun. Or old Charles, whose trigger question is, how's the wife? And whose screamed answer is, fuck the wife, fuck the wife. You get to know them by their bits. Matternick is tidy, is his bit. No one can touch him. He won't touch an object another has touched. He strips if a towel touches him. He rubbed the hide off the end of his nose once after running it up against a patient who had stopped too quickly. He's tall, stooped, eyes lost under a cliff of a brow, rubbing his hands forever together. Looks like an old time wrestler I once saw called the Swedish Angel. And he coughs violently whenever he smokes his daily allotted cigarette. The smoke, dirty, but he begs continually for cigarettes. This poem is called N.P. Ward, Locked. On the seventh floor in that insane parlor, we sit and stare with screaming eyes, key turning on key, the chain, a circle, fingered and stilled. Eyes flicker, restless, an artificial rose, dry, blooming, blurred, on the window pane, receiving rain that streams as tears do from the eyes of women who await below for our rationality to return. <laughs> ¶¶ 